Hello there, and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4. Today, we're going to hop in as Communist China. Why, you ask? Because they're small, they're red. But they could be great. Let's allow Chairman Mao to take the P-Rock from this tiny little one-state miner with eight soldiers and turn them into a powerhouse. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make Chairman Mao a venerable leader of the Chinese. So how do we start out here as the P-Rock? Well, I think our flag is wrong. This is like the modern Chinese flag. It's not the one they were using at the time. We start out with service by requirement, which is crazy. We also start with a closed economy, so we don't trade very well. And we have total mobilization, which is also crazy. These are absolutely nuts. These three things are just insane to start the game with. But you have to understand, the reason why these are at the start like this is because there's a civil war going on in China. It's not an actual, you know, war. They didn't they didn't trade papers like, oh, I declare war on you. It wasn't like that. It was the P-Rock kind of rose up and China tried to crush them. And China has pushed the P-Rock up here to just this one little state of Shaanxi. Is it Shaanxi or Shaanxi? Maybe it's Shaanxi. I don't know. There should be an apostrophe there. In any case, there's not much land left for the People's Republic of China. There's only eight divisions, and we're going to put them all under the glorious leadership of Field Marshal Mao Zedong, who's uh, good on defense, but has no offensive capabilities whatsoever. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So there's some interesting mechanics that happen for the P-Rock and China. There's border disputes. There's free flipping of land. Like if we go to China here, we go to details. Communist uprisings. If communist support in the country gets too high, the communists will take control of a random state. So we're gonna get some random states here just by boosting party popularity. So we need to do that at the start. Uh, we get a generic idea tree, unfortunately, but uh, the generic idea tree is pretty good. So I can't complain about that. Let's start on some industry. And we only get two research slots. Ugh. I think the first thing I'm going to want is weapons. And the second thing I'm going to want is more weapons. Because <laughs> we don't really have any good weapons. Now, we have two civilian factories. One of them is used to make toasters. And the other one is going to be traded away. Because if we want to make more guns, we need more steel. So let's go trade with the Soviet and make some make some wonderful guns. We should start some recruits as well. Uh, this division is kind of crap. This Juntuan, not a fan. It's a two by two with no support. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to get rid of that. This one's better. It's a three by two, but again, with no support. So it's kind of, eh, I mean, it could be better, right? This is kind of a, kind of a shit division, but we're going to, we're going to make it our main division anyway. Let's rename it. Let's rename this to, um, Hard hats. There you go. So I, I at least know what I'm looking at here. And we're going to say, hey, Mao, your army's great and all, but we're going to switch them all to hard hats. Uh-huh. It's going to use 520,000. No, it's going to use 6,000 of our manpower. Yeah, it's like nothing. And I want you guys to exercise. And I want you guys to get on Shaanxi's border because we are going to eat him for breakfast. Now, all these little states over here, you have Shaanxi, Xinjiang, Sibei Sanma, Yunnan, and the Guangxi clique, they're all Chinese cores. But Chinese cores are shared because both the P-Rock and the Kuomintang consider themselves to be China. Uh, they both get cores on all of these states. So if we check out Sibei Sanma, you can see that there's P-Rock core and there's also a Chinese core. Guangxi clique, Chinese core, P-Rock core. Shaanxi, same thing. And they're all the same thing. So these states are all conquerable by both of us. The difference between them being, we start out communist. And because we're communist, we can just declare the war right away. All we have to do is justify it and we can declare the war right away. China, on the other hand, the Kuomintang, they cannot declare the war right away. Because they're government type, they're non-aligned, uh, they have to get to 50% world tension before they can even fabricate a claim. They just have to wait. 
Okay, so let's get some of these guys. Oh, yeah, let's get rid of this design. Let's make some of these guys train in here. Let's say, uh, uh, 48 divisions. I think 48 divisions is fine. Let's do that. And you guys can join General Mao's army. There you go. All right, to work. Get to work, gentlemen. But yeah, since it's kind of like a muted civil war, you're going to see some civil war pop-ups. Talks about how we're like having border skirmishes and throwing tin cans at each other across the border here. You want to go mass assault doctrine plus the people's army for authentic play? Uh, I don't think we're going to do mass assault. I'm just not a fan of mass assault. The bonuses you get are kind of garbage. It, it's... It's okay for the Soviet Union, but I don't even like it for them. Mass Assault is just not my thing. I just don't like it. I don't like Mass Assault. No, I'm just not a fan. Uh, the two that I really like are the Superior Firepower. If you're low on manpower, this is good. And Mobile Warfare. This is good if you have a lot of developments. You can actually build a bunch of tanks. I'm just not a fan of Mass Assault. The Kuomintang launch an offensive. This is one of our civil war pop-ups here. Although we have escaped certain defeat through the long march, the nationalists are not planning to let us grow stronger without more confrontations. Our spies suggest they are mounting an offensive against us, which could weaken our political support if we try to retreat. We don't know how committed the Kuomintang are to push us, right, to push us back right now. Trying to confront them carries significant risks. If the local warlords have been rallied to support the, ta the attack, our chances may be slim. On the other hand, retreating now when we have finally stopped may not be an option. So do we retreat into isolation and lose 50 political points? Or do we confront them and have a 50% chance of gaining political points and a 50% chance of losing political points? Well, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead, right click and justify a war goal here because this takes political points. And uh, can I get a few more points before I click that? Yeah, let me just fabricate one more claim, and then I'll click it. Oh, I need more. One more day. There we go. Okay, see? Now I can click it. So it's a 50% chance to gain points, and a 50% chance to lose points. The, the gain or loss of manpower doesn't really matter at all, because we have massive manpower. So let's go ahead and confront them. And we lost! Darn it! I'm glad I spent my points. Despite our best efforts to repel the attack of locally assembled troops supporting the nationalist government, our preparations were insufficient to stop it. With significant losses, we have been forced into a new retreat, albeit shorter. Confronting the nationalists before we had, a fully, reco before we had fully recovered may have been a mistake. Our magnificent recovery in the long march instilled hope in our supporters, but now seeds of doubt have been sown. It doesn't actually lower our land at all, like you would think that would cause us to lose this river and maybe get us pushed back to this river, but no, it doesn't change the borders at all. But now we have negative political power. That's always fun. Okay, industrial effort is done. It gives us a research bonus for industry. Ah, let's go right down here and get a construction fort, a construction factory. <laughs> construction fort, yes. Meanwhile, Germany's over here. He's like, oh, I'm gonna remilitarize the Rhineland because no one's gonna care about that. No one in the world's gonna care. Hey, I care, okay? Germany, you're out of control. You need to tone it down a bit. Oh, and by the way, we're at 9% communism in China. Shh. Shh. How are we doing on exercise in there? Oh, we're doing great. We almost, there we go. We got some regulars now. Let's put you in the new army. Yeah. When they're done exercising, I just take them out. If you, leave, if you leave regulars inside an exercising army, they will continue to exercise, but they won't get any experience, which means their equipment will get damaged, uh, but they won't actually get any benefit from it. So as your units reach that, that status of regular, just take them out into a separate army and they can merge them back into the original army as soon as your exercising is done. All right, clash with the nationalist army. While we still have barely recovered from the previous offensive, the Nationalists appear to be increasing their troop presence in the areas close to our border. Clearly, they are trying to show that they once again have us cornered. All right, so we can't let the people think this is true. Uh, border war. 
Uh, this doesn't really explain itself very well, and there is no other place in the game that this happens, at least not that I've seen. So a border war here in China just means you put troops in these orange hatched areas, and if you have enough troops there, you win the border war! And the benefit is you get some political power points. And we won the border war. <laughs> it's such a goofy event. So that gave us some political power points. Great! Let's fabricate some more claims. No, don't boost party popularity. Fabricate claims. Fabricate claims. We're fabricating, okay? Don't mind me. All right, how long until we get this CB? August. That is a while. That is a while. But we have new recruits training right now. Very good, very good. We got ourselves a civilian factory. Excellent, let's get some more civilian factories. No reason to slow down now. Oh, we can build stuff. We have civilian fact, we can build stuff. We can build stuff. What do you want to build? Infrastructure? Let's get some infrastructure. Yeah. That's all I can really build. I could build anti-aircraft guns. I could build an airport. There's no room for any more factories. Okay, we got infantry equipment one. Very nice. Uh, it's 1936. Why don't we... Yeah, let's get some wrenches going. You know, we need to discover wrenches. Wrenches are amazing. You'll love wrenches. Uh, let's also get uh, electronic mechanical engineering. Yes, please. It's like circuitry. We're going to learn about circuits and stuff. Circuits and stuff with Chairman Mao. Oh, yeah, it has to be the People's Army. This is the People's Army. Oh, yeah, did I mention this is on the beta? You can tell this is on the beta because of these three buttons here. So when you give a command, like you can say, hey, these divisions need to go here and take this land. When you give a command like this, you can choose whether to take a cautious approach, a balanced approach, or an aggressive approach. And the difference is how your troops actually push. Do they wait for their organization to come back? You know, if you want them to just not wait, then you can put them on aggressive. They'll just constantly attack. Uh, or you can say, hey, you know, be very, very careful and only push when it's advantageous. So they might sit on the border for a long, 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 long time. Fabricate on Tibet? No, we don't have cores on Tibet. There's no cores there. We could fabricate on Tibet, but he'll just get guaranteed by France or something stupid. All right, some more troops finishing their training. I learned how to twirl my gun today. It was amazing. We're now professional gun twirlers. All right, so a lot of the troops are finishing up their training here. And we have some new, this guy's a new recruit. This guy was just, you can tell because his name is Hard Hats. All the previous guys, their name comes from what their original division was called. So this division was the Shensi Juntuan. Whereas these guys are all hard hats. They're the new they're the newbies. What that means, of course, is that this guy, who's still a Shensi Juntuan, he is the dumbest motherfucker there. Because these other seven, they all finished their training a while ago. Look at this. These guys are almost done preparing for the offensive. But this guy? Hmm, he is a dummy. He's like, duh. I point the gun the wrong way and I shot my foot. Yeah. You shouldn't do that. It's not very smart, is it? All right, I'm going to switch things up a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to put... Guys into this army. I'm going to take the experienced guys out of this army. There you go. Guys, get back over there. You guys stop exercising. You guys start exercising, and you guys get back. see that works out fine. And now the new recruit's going to go to the purple army, where they can exercise. Purple army. Hello. Ah. Ah, I didn't have it clicked. There we go. For some reason, you can't... Ha I don't know why this is the case. It's silly. For some reason, you cannot assign troops 
to automatically join an army unless that army is given a specific task in the game. So the purple army, you, I, I assign them to garrison our home state, our capital. And if I didn't give them the garrison order, I was, un, I was unable to assign the new troops to that army automatically. I don't know why you have to give them an order. You just do. All right, when are we going to get it? August 20th. Oh, we're almost there. We're four days away from war. You guys ready for war? I'm ready for war. Four, five, six. Yes, yes. Yes. Chairman Mao, let us march on the silly Shaanxi. Do you guys have an army? I think they have. An, I think they have something. Beep 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 beep. Oh, there's an army. I found your army, bro. I found your army, bro. Let me go steal your capital while we're fighting. This poor guy. We're just going to trap him and kill him. This poor guy. Oh, he's dead. Retake states. Yes, please. So since there are cores, it doesn't really generate any world tension. No one gives any crap. You're next, Tibe Sanma. You're next. How goes our uh, influence here in China? We're at 24%. Not bad. Not bad. Just going to continue down the construction tree because it's pretty good. So we, from uh, from those two states, we got some more military factories, which is nice. We got one, two. We got three more military factories. Not bad, not bad at all. I still can't build any new factories because there's no available slots. So I guess we can just do some some infrastructure for now. All right, and we're going to get on Sibe San Ma's border, and we'll start pushing into him. I think, though, I am going to take all of our troops for this because we just need more people, really. And let's give ourselves a nice design here for the invasion. A nice plan, a battle plan, shall we? I want you to take the capital. And I think that'll do. Okay. Let's get on the border. I'll let you get a little preparation up here because preparation is actually really, really good. Oh, we can modify our government. What would we like to do here? <sighs> we have a military theorist. Ooh, captain of industry. That would be nice if we could actually build civilian factories. But we can't build civilian factories, so what's the point? Uh, army regrouping. More organization gain. Army offensive. That's probably going to be the most useful. Unless we want to go for, like... Uh, a research. You know what? Since we only have two research slots, let's go for research speed. I think that's going to be useful. Uh, let's get some industry research speed. Because we only have two research slots. We might as well make them work better for us. So 10% faster research is great. Okay, are we there? Are you ready? I got a check mark. I see a check mark. It is time. Go get him, Chairman Mao. Get him. Show them what the communist revolution is all about. Nationalists offer truce. Disagreements within the nationalist ranks have led to a precarious situation. Their leader, Chiang Kai-shek, has been arrested in an effort to force our enemies to accept a truce with us to unite China against foreign enemies. Although we would like to see the Kuomintang leadership facing punishment for their crimes against us, this is a rare opportunity to cooperate and ensure that China does not fall into the hands of foreign imperialists. Do we accept a truce with China? It says they arrested Chiang Kai-shek. It doesn't look like he's arrested. No, no, this is a clever ruse. The revolution cannot be set aside. No. Your lies mean nothing to me, Chiang Kai-shek. I'm just going to rush the capital. Screw this. Go. Go. 
I got places to be, man. Ain't got time for just chilling at the border. Yeah, see, they have no defenses over here. Might as well just go. We're still fighting at the border, and I'm like, eh, I'm just gonna go get the capital, don't mind me. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing here. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. I mean, I guess the AI is doing what they thought was best, which was putting troops on the front line. Cornered no more, the Red Army once survived in a state of what seemed like hopelessness. But since the long march several years back, the tide has slowly turned. With significant territorial advances, our, ro our role as an underdog is a thing of the past. Having fought through the time of struggle, our desperation is now behind us. Mao Zedong has gone from guerrilla army to chairman. Long live the People's Republic. Chairman Mao. Someone get a chair for Mao. He's, he's, he's tired. His old bones need a rest. And someone please get a chair for Mao. I mean, I know he's leading troops in battle and stuff, but he can still use a chair. Poor guy. He's not, he's not superhuman. More industry, please. Yeah. More industry, please. Now that we get a 10% discount on the research. And the extra research slot. Nice. That'll give us a third research slot. What the hell am I going to do with a third research slot? That's, that's just nuts. Nobody can possibly use three research slots, right? Alright, this shit's over. Gold mood is ours. I think. 89. 91, 92. This should be it. Come on, Mao. Get it. This is your legacy here. Yes. Yes, we got it. Whew. And still, it's like no world tension because it's all cores. All right, more. We need more. There's never enough time to get everything that we need. How are we doing on the whole communism thing? Hey, 35% communist. Hey, China, how would you like to, I don't know, join us? Join us! Go communist! No, he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll go communist. Just give him some time. He just, you know, he needs to think about it. He needs to talk it over with the wife and all that kind of stuff. You know, he needs approval for this kind of shit. I understand. I'm not producing the new guns. Oh, you're right. Let's produce the new guns. Whoops. Hey, free research slot. All right. Get some more construction going. So what the hell am I going to do with a third research slot? Uh, let's get some drills. Drills are amazing. The Hindenburg incident. Disaster was narrowly averted today when a diesel fuel leak was discovered on the German passenger airship Hindenburg as it came into dock at the Lakehurst Naval Air Station in the United States. The leak was promptly repaired. Had it gone unnoticed, flammable vapor could have resulted in a fire that would have engulfed the entire airship. Ooh. Critics have long questioned the wisdom of passenger airships given their spotty safety records. Yeah, I don't... They look cool, though. A close call, indeed. All right, Chairman Mao. How are we doing here? Are you ready to invade? I think he's almost ready. I think he's almost ready. Oh, we can modify our governments again. What would we like to modify here? Infantry equipment is probably the most important thing for us. How are we doing on supplies, by the way? Oh, we have extra guns. Nice. We have extra guns just chilling. All right. Looks like we're almost ready to go here. Go get him, Chairman Mao. No rest for the wicked. Uh, you can catnap later.
Where are you going? You guys are going north. I'm going to cut these troops off if I can. Put them in a little pocket. We can squish it. Ooh, there's an airport over there. Neat. Amelia Earhart disappears. Oh, that's a loss for aviation, according to the game. I wonder if there's anyone in the capital. Oh, there is. Darn AI, you're just too smart. Wait, are these Russian troops... There's Russian troops here. Did I miss the Marco Polo Bridge incident? Darn it, there's no log in the game. I think I just missed the Marco Polo Bridge incident. Uh, yes, we did. War with China is on the way. So it looks like China has rejected Japan's demands for... Yeah, because if China had accepted, all of this land would have flipped to Japan. But it didn't. So China has rejected Japan's demands for territorial concessions. Let's isolate the capital. Yep. That should do it, I think. Is there anything left to do? That should be the war. Spanish Civil War. Ooh, that's actually a little late, isn't it? Sometimes uh, sometimes it's in the first year, but I don't know. I guess August of year two ain't that bad. There we go. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. What is this? Insufficient resources steel. I'll take some more steel then. So we just took over his factories. We now have 17 civilian factories and uh, 11 military factories. Not bad, not bad, it's a good start. But that's gonna have to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Shen, you've been you. Come back next time where we'll see the war with Japan, oof. Also, where's my free stuff? I'm supposed to be getting free stuff here, come on. Where's my free stuff, Chiang Kai-shek? Anyway, I'll see you next time. Have a good day.